Well, good morning. Good to see each and every one of you here today. We want to welcome you to the tab, and we want to welcome each and every one of you that is joining us online here this morning. During the month of May, we've been in a series of messages entitled The Storms of Life. And we've learned some things, have we not, about the storms of life. The first thing we've learned in our series is that storms happen. Amen. Storms happen to the, uh, to the best and to the worst of us. The writer of Ecclesiastes uh, put it this way in chapter 3, verse 1. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And uh, there's a time for blizzards, and there's a time for bliss. There's a time for, for the rain, and there's a time for the sun to, uh, to shine. And we've, uh, we've also discovered that every person, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, or gender, is in one of three places while in this world. And the first place we discovered that people are in is, uh, is that they're headed toward a storm. Uh, in other words, the light is shining over their life right now, maybe over their home, over their finances, over their health, right? Uh, but they're headed towards a storm. They can see the storm in the distance, but the sun is shining on them currently. The second place people are in life is that they're in a storm. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people that are, that are in a storm today, all right? Whether it's a physical storm or a relational storm or, uh, thank you, Jim or a, uh, uh, an emotional storm, maybe a financial storm, the storm of debt. But there's dark clouds all around them. And then the third place uh, we discovered is, is that people are coming out of a storm. All right, the, the storm is, is behind them, and the rainbow is, is shining. The sun is, uh, is ahead of them. So regardless of who you are today, regardless of uh, what you might be going through, you need to know something about every person you will ever encounter in life, they are in one of three places when you're meeting them. When you go to work tomorrow morning, every person is in one of those three places. When you, uh, when you wake up next year on January 1st, every person you meet that day, that new year, throughout that new year, is in one of three places in this life. Well, how can you say, Pastor Tim, well, in this life? Well, Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, these words. He said, in this world, Everybody say this world. Yeah, in this world, isn't that good news? Uh, you will have what? You'll have tribulation, i.e. storms, right? <laughs> All right? Trouble, whatever you call the storms. It could be tribulation, temptation, tempest, trouble, trials, uh, turmoil, whatever you want to call it, right? Jesus says you're going to have storms in this world. All right, but take heart, all right, take heart. That means be of good courage. Don't worry, don't get nervous. Don't go to biting your fingernails. What? I've overcome the world. In other words, I've overcome what? I've overcome the storms. Now, that's good news because what that means for those of us who dare to believe in Jesus, and if you're not a believer in Jesus, I would encourage you to become one, all right? What that means is this, is that we don't have to die and go to heaven to defeat the storms. Amen? In other words, we're going to have storms in this life. That's just part of living. But that doesn't mean we have to be defeated by the storms. Jesus gives us the victory here and now, not just in heaven. And when we get to heaven, there's no more storms. All right? Uh, as our song, sang, uh, we, we sang about it today, in, in heaven there's no faith. Our faith will what? Will be, will be our eyes. I mean, we don't hope for stuff we have, right? Well, I hope I had a purple tie. Well, I don't, I don't have to hope. I got it. I'm holding it, all right? So, so there's no more faith in heaven. You won't have to even believe in heaven. You just look around, and there, there it is, right? I mean, you're, you're walking on the streets of gold. You see the gates of pearl. There's the throne, right? There's Jesus. There's the angels. You don't have to have any of that. So, so it's in this world that we need faith. It's in this world we need hope. It's in this world we need what? We need the power to overcome what? Overcome the enemy. Because it's in this world only, and I love that, God put a boundary <laughs> on the storms. Once you die, the storms are over. Hallelujah, praise God for that. But we don't have to wait. Please hear me say that. We don't have to wait to die. Well, if I just get over and beyond, you know, the golden shore, the celestial sea, all will be well. Well, here's the thing. God wants us to have victory now, amen? 
God wants us to, to, uh, to win in this life, not just in the life to come, all right? So that's important. The storm that we're looking at this morning is the storm of darkness. The storm of darkness. Now, there's an old parable which says this, all sunshine and no rain makes a desert. How many of you have been to a desert before? Yeah, I've been to a desert one time in my life, and that was the first and last time I'll ever go. I mean a desert. It's a kitty litter box. That's what it is. It is, it, you look, everywhere you look, there's sand. You know, I like sand as long as it's next to an ocean, right? Can I get an amen from someone that likes the beach? Yeah, I like sand as long as it butts up to an ocean or, or a lake or a pond or something. But, but a desert, what, is, 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 is no rain. There's no moisture. I mean, it's dry. Things don't grow there, all right? Uh, but all sunshine, knows this, and no rain, it makes a desert. And uh, we all love the sun. You know, we all love the sun. Praise God. It's a beautiful sunny day today here in central Illinois. For those of you that don't, don't know or are watching us online, it's a gorgeous day today. I thank God for beautiful sunny days. But you know what we need to learn to do? We need to learn to thank God as much for the rain. Because we need both, amen? We need both sunshine and rain to make, uh, to make our world beautiful and lush and beautiful, or it's going to turn into a desert. What are, we, what are we trying to say, Pastor? What I'm trying to say is, is that it rains in our lives, storms, and we need not to, uh, to, to, to be depressed about the storms or be shocked by the storms or, 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 or surprised, I should say, by the storms. Uh, but to, to realize that's just a part of life in this world, in this world. In other words, I've learned this, that life is a mixture. How many of you know life's a mixture of what? Pain and pleasure. Life is a mixture of victory and defeat. Life is a mixture of success and failure. Life is a mixture of mountaintops. Woo, we love the mountaintops. I mean, have been to a top of a mountain before. Wonderful, beautiful. You can see for miles on the top of the mountain. But we need, to, we need to recognize that, that there's valleys, too, in, uh, in, in life. Life's a mixture, right? Sometimes you hit the ball, and sometimes you strike out. Baseball's a wonderful sport. I like baseball. It's my favorite sport. Because you could fail seven times out of ten, and they call you a success. I mean, if I had a 300 average, think about that. If I just hit the ball three out of ten times, they'd pay me millions. Unfortunately, I couldn't even do that. So, so I'm, not, I'm not a professional baseball player. I mean, think about that. Isn't that interesting? You strike out seven times, hit the ball three times, they call you a success. If you hit it four out of times, they put you in the Hall of Fame. Right? I mean, some of you know, know, know some things about baseball. So, so life is a mixture of all this. It's just, again, in this world. In this world. And in order for us, in other words, to celebrate the sun, beautiful day today, we need to experience some, some rain. In order for us to rejoice in the light, we must pass through the darkness. In order for us to have a message, we have to what? We have to first wade through the mess. In order for us to have a testimony, we first must what? Pass the test. And you all know, I've told you this, uh, you know, a, a testimony without a test is just a money. That's all you got. And I know a whole bunch of people that have a money. That's all they got. And you get around them. This next week, you're, you're going to encounter people that all they've got is a money. They moan. Oh, my back. Oh, my head. Oh, my kids. Oh, my, oh, my dog. Oh, my cat. Oh, oh, oh my job. Oh, my. They moan. Are you, are you with me? That, all they got is a money. And they go around moaning and groaning. Now, here, watch this now. That's part of the, that's, that's storms, right? The money. We need to start looking at every money as what? An opportunity for a testimony. Think about that. Every time you get sick, well, praise God, here's a testimony. God's going to heal me. That's what a testimony is. It's victory over the monies. That's what it is. You don't have a message until you go through some messes. And then you could say, well, look how God delivered me from my, from my addictions. Look how God delivered me from my negative thinking, my, my cursing, or... Are you with me? So we need to look at this and say, hey, listen, I don't have to be succumbed and defeated by the storms of life. God can actually turn these things around and use them for his glory. How many of you want a testimony? Oh, praise God. Yes, I do, Pastor. Well, then get ready for some tests. But don't, 
don't just stop at the money. Persevere through them. Say, bless God through Jesus, I have the victory. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Amen? And God will give you a testimony. I've got, I've got numerous testimonies, and you do too. Why? Because you've received the victory over the storms in life. And you're a living testimony. You're a pillar. Every single one of you here, I know enough about you that you've got some testimonies, amen? You've been through some junk and come out on the other end. You've been through some trials. You've been through some storms. You've been through some, I'm preaching. You've been through some stuff and you what? You've come out and you're better for it. You're refined for it. Well, one of the storms that we're going to encounter in life is the storm of darkness. And probably most of you have experienced this storm already. You look around, and there's no light to be found. There's no hope. You feel, you've you been hopeless. Man, I just don't know how this is going to work out this time. I can look back, well, we got some big, but, but oh, man, it's darkness all around you. The storm of darkness will come upon every person's life sooner or later. In fact, I've discovered this. Before there was anything in this world, there was darkness. Go back to Genesis 1.1. Look at this with me. Genesis 1.1 and 2 says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. And what was there? Darkness. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So before there was anything in this world, there was darkness. Isn't that interesting? You probably never saw that before. I mean, it was dark. Now, now look at this, Genesis 1, verse 3 and 5 goes on to tell us what God did next. So there was darkness everywhere, the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over the, over the waters of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Now notice this, look at this verse with me. Notice, God called the light good. Look at that scripture. But he didn't call the darkness good. Matter of fact, in all, if you look at the Genesis 1 and 2, chapter 1 and 2 account, the only thing God did not call good after he created it was darkness. Well, that right there, we can all go home and just learn something. All right? It's amazing. After all the things God created, the only thing God didn't look at and say, boy, that's good, that's good, boy, that's good, that's real good, was darkness. He called the light good, but he didn't call the darkness good. But how many of you know that God created our world to have pretty much an equal balance of what? Light and darkness. Every 24 hours, what? Light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. Darkness is what? A part of this world, but notice God didn't call it good. And if you turn your, your book all the way to the, to the end, uh, the Bible all the way to the end, and read Revelation 21, 22, you want to know something about heaven? Teach you something about heaven. There's no darkness. None. It's daylight, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of eternity. Why? Because the darkness isn't good. Isn't that interesting? It's it, it just, it, there's no darkness in heaven. It's going to be light. And, and God's going to, God's going, doesn't mean it's going to be a desert in heaven. I'm not saying that, all right? Uh, but but there, there's, there's light in, uh, in, in heaven. Now, notice the first thing God did in the middle of the storm of darkness. The storm of darkness was in the very beginning. God stepped out, watch this now, in eternity looked around our world and there was nothing but darkness. And you know what he didn't do? He said, boy, this is dark, dark you know. Oh, oh my, I mean, it's dark. this is darker than dark. I can't even see my own hand. I'm talking about God. He didn't, he didn't, you know, get worried or defeated by the darkness. What did he do? He stepped out and he said, let there be light. What did he do? He spoke to the darkness. He spoke to the darkness. What are we to do when the storm of darkness comes into our lives? Don't get intimidated by the darkness and don't talk about the darkness. And I know a whole lot of people, and I've done this too, okay? Don't, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to, you know, uh, uh, condemn anybody because I've done this too. We like to talk about the darkness. 
Oh, pastor. They'd be coming and calling me. Oh, pastor. You don't know how dark it is in my life. You don't know the Are you with me? I mean, we've all done it. And I say, well, and I turn around and say, oh, well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> they say, oh, man, I'm not too bad. I guess I'll leave. You made me feel pretty good, pastor. You got it worse than me. Right? We've all talked about the darkness. We need to stop. What do we need to do? We need to start speaking light to the darkness. Now, what is the light? The light is the Word of God. Psalm 119, 105, the psalmist said, Thy word is a light unto my path, a lamp, right, unto my darkness, right? It's the Word of God. In other words, we need to speak the Word of God to the darkness, whatever that darkness is. Isn't that good? We can say, darkness, go. Let there be light. Let there be light in, uh, in each and every one of our lives. The psalmist, King David, in Psalm 23, verse 4, encountered the storm of darkness. And I love this. We all know Psalm 23. Probably this is the first psalm you ever memorized. It says this, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the storm of darkness, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's talking about God's presence. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Isn't that great? So who's with us in the storm of darkness? God. Jesus, our Savior. We're walking. It might be dark in your life right now. You might be shrouded in darkness. But I want to give you some hope today. I want to stir up your faith. You're not alone. God is with you in the darkness. God is with you to, what? to walk you through the valley of the shadow of death, the storm of darkness. Now, there are four valleys in life. I want you to just write these down so that you're not surprised by them that we go through. What are the valleys? Valleys are the low places in life. How many of you have ever been low in life before? How many of you have ever, you know, just hit rock bottom before? How many of you felt lonely before or, or worthless before or hopeless before? We all probably have and you haven't. Then you haven't lived long enough, you'll get there. I mean, where y'all hit rock bottom, that's the valley. We've all been in the valley. We've all hit the valley. I've been down so low. Every time I looked up, all I saw was bottom. I was underneath bottom. Low. We've all been there. We've all been there. The valleys are the low, low times in life. And there's four valleys that you will encounter in life. The Bible talks about them. The first valley is the valley of disaster. Joshua 2, verse 6 said this. Joshua said, why have you brought this disaster upon us? The Lord will bring disaster upon you today. Then all Israel stoned Achan. And after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan, they heaped a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called, watch, the Valley of Disaster. The Valley of Disaster. We've talked about the Valley of Disaster in this series. As part, of, as, as part of the storms, a storm of disaster, the valley. Number two, the valley of weeping. I mean, have you ever weeped in life before? Have you ever cried in life before? Well, that's a valley. Psalm 84 says, Blessed are those whose strength is in God, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of weeping, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. You know, I don't know about you, but there's times in my life I've wept. I mean, things have happened, and it just throws you into a valley. We don't need to be surprised by this. I mean, that's, this is what's going to happen in this world. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. In this world, you're going to have to walk through some valleys. I'm just making them, I'm just showing you what they are. Valley of weeping. Number three is the valley of trouble. I mean, you've ever had some trouble in your life before. Hosea 2, verse 15 says, There I will give her back her vineyards and will make the valley of trouble a door of hope. There she will sing as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came out of Egypt. So one of the low times in life that we'll experience in this world is, is trouble. We're going to experience trouble. We're going to experience tribulation. We're going to experience trials. We're going to experience tempests and storms in this life. It's a valley. Then the fourth valley is the one we're talking about here today, the valley of darkness or the storm of darkness. And again, as the psalmist said, Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. Every person, if you look at every single one of these valleys I just mentioned to you today, 
God was so good to say this, that you're going to experience some low times in your life. But watch this. You're going to go through them. Isn't that wonderful? You're going to go through the valley of weeping. You're going to go through the valley of disaster, through the valley of the, of the storm, through the valley of, 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 of temptation and turmoil and, and darkness and despair. But you're not going to get stuck there. Not going to get stuck there. That is if you're, if you're a believer. And, and what I want to do today is share with you five truths to keep you moving through the valley, to give you hope in the valley, and in particular, the storm of darkness. So write this down because the storm of darkness is going to come to each and every one of our lives. We need to know what to do in the middle of them. Truth number one, write this down. Truth number one is, is this, that dark valleys are inevitable. They're inevitable. As I shared at the beginning of this message today, every person is in one of three places, headed towards a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. The light fades and the storms of darkness roll in to our lives, sometimes without warning. For Jesus, it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when the storms were going to come. So you and I need to make a decision today that you are not going to be surprised anymore when the storm clouds roll into your life. Instead, make a decision. I'm going to praise God when the sun's shining. I'm going to praise God in the midst of the storm. I like that song. I'm going to praise God when, when everything's going well, and I'm going to praise God when it's not going well. Why? Because here's the thing. In this world, Jesus said, John 16, in this world you're going to have, have trouble, turmoil, trials, temptations, tempests, and storms. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. In other words, there's victory in Jesus over every storm in life. Amen? And you know what we need to do, saints? Here's what we need to do. We need to remind ourselves of that, but we need to remind our brothers and sisters about that. When, you're, when your friends go through the storm, or when they're in it, or when one of you are in it, you're in your small groups, you go up to your small group member, you go up to your family member, your friend, whatever, your coworker. you wrap your arms around them and say, okay, now, let me remind you of something. You might be in the storm right now. We're not denying the storm. We're denying that the storm stays. Let me, let me just remind you, there's victory in Jesus over the storms of life. And we just all need to be reminded of that. Amen? There's victory in Jesus. Praise God. Because you know what the storms do? The storms come and they hit our lives sometimes with so much force, we forget that Jesus is with us. Amen? And we can start talking about the darkness and start talking about, start talking about the despair and all that the devil's doing. What we need to do is take that test and turn it into a testimony. Amen? We just need to remind ourselves. Why? Because dark clouds, dark valleys, storms of darkness... They're inevitable. They're going to come. Truth number two. Dark valleys are unpredictable. They're unpredictable. How many of you have lived long enough to know uh, that many of the most painful experiences in life are rarely planned? I mean, you can't schedule a storm. You can't say, well, you know what? I don't have anything going on three Tuesdays from now, devil. If you want to bring a storm into my life sometime, I've got all day I can, I can take. Storms come and hit our lives, at least in my experience, at, at the most inopportune times. Amen? I mean, it, it, it just, it'll just come. They're unpredictable. They, they, it doesn't make sense. You know, how many of you one day woke up and thinking, boy, this is going to be a great day? Everything is going great. You're thinking, whoo, man, this is one of the best days of my life. And then all of a sudden you receive a, a negative report. You, you receive a phone call. You get an email. You get a text message from a family member or friend. And all of a sudden you're in the storm of darkness. Right? That happened to us just this past week. Matter of fact, within the last 24 hours. The matriarch of our family, boom, was in the hospital, almost on her deathbed yesterday morning. Well, what did I do? I didn't, oh, God. I know. I rebuked the darkness. There's no distance in prayer. I said, devil, get your hands off her. I don't care if she is 90. 
So you don't need sickness and disease to take you out of this world. All you need to do is God to call your spirit home. You're going to go home. Amen? We, we don't need a storm. We don't need an accident to take us out of this world. All Jesus has to do is say, come on up here. You don't need to die of some ailment. And, and the doctor, you know, says, well, how's she done? She died of a heart attack. Well, yeah, your spirit leaves your body. You're going to stop, you're going to stop breathing. You're going to have a heart attack. That's what's going to happen. I mean, they're going to, they're going to have to put a little medical tag on that because they can't explain it. But when your spirit leaves your body, you're going to die. And you don't need a disease to kill you. Does that make sense? So I rebuked the devil. I said, listen, you get your hands off her. When God wants her to go home, he's going to call her home, and not a day before. Within an hour, she was fine. Well, what happened? Well, I wasn't the only one praying because all my family saved, and they went to praying. We had probably upwards of 100 people praying for Aunt Marjorie. Amen? They're unpredictable. We didn't know I was out mowing grass. I was praying as I'm mowing. I mean, you know, I was giving it to the devil. I thought, well, I got an hour. I'm just going to beat up on the devil, right? They're unpredictable. They can come at a moment's notice. Don't be shocked by that. I like what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 4, verse 20, the Living Bible. Disaster follows disaster. In an instant, my tents are destroyed. My shelters fall in a moment. They're unpredictable. Amen. That's just kind of the nature of the storms. Number three, dark valleys are impartial. I know we all like to think that the devil, that we're the number one target on the devil's hit list. That the devil's got this hit list, and he, boy, he put us at the top of his hit list. The, the reality is, dark valleys and storms of life come to us all. They're no respecter of persons. The storm of darkness will visit us all. So what I'm saying is, saints, you and I are not alone. All right? We're not alone. You're not the first Christian to go through a storm. Your family is not the first family to encounter the storm of darkness, and it's probably not going to be the last. Uh, there, unfortunately, are no antibiotics available for a select few of God's saints. No one is immune, in other words, to the storm of of darkness and to the valleys in life no one is able to insulate themselves in this world from pain from sadness and from sorrow storms are what are a part of this life God allows notice the good and the bad to occur to everybody's life Matthew 5 45 says these words God gives what sunlight to both the evil and to the good God sends what? Rain on the just and rain on the unjust. And notice now, notice now, in this world. See, it looks like, I mean, we're kind of on evil loving flames right now in this world. The sinners and the saints, whether you're living for God or living for the devil, you're going to experience good days and bad days is what that says in this world. Now, we as saints, we have victory over the darkness in this world, but here's where it gets set, here's where the sheep and goats get separated. It's in the next world. In other words, if you're a Christian, you die and go to heaven, there will never be a storm. There will never be darkness ever again. Never pain, no sickness, disease, illness, or backache, or toothache in heaven. Hell, by the way, you know what they call hell? Outer darkness, utter darkness. That's the first description of hell. Before it talks about the fire, before it talks about the worm that never dies, before it talks about the weeping and gnashing of teeth, you know what the first description of hell is? Utter darkness. In other words, people in hell will never see light ever again. Ever. Matter of fact, I don't even think they see the flames. I think it's just black forever and ever and ever. So in this world, God gives light to both the good and the bad, the just and the unjust night and day both and unjust but in the next world it's all light for us and it's all darkness for them so 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 don't get don't get worried about about that god's causing it to happen just in this world but there's coming a separation truth number four truth number four is uh is this dark valleys oh this is good are temporary they're temporary the storms in life are temporary the storm didn't come to stay it came to pass now, if you look back, depending on how old you are or how young you are, you might, and just in the natural, think about the natural, you might have encountered 
for those of you that are elderly here this morning, maybe say 10,000 storms. I won't look at anybody. Right. Let's say you've encountered 10,000 rainstorms, snowstorms in your life, all right? Thousands of storms. Think about all the storms. We had to count them all that you, you encountered in this world, just in the natural realm, okay? But every one of those storms came and went. Now, there were some that were longer in duration, right? Maybe there are storms that are five minutes long, storms that are five hours long. There might be a storm that's five days long. I don't know, that'd be a pretty long storm. But every storm in this world, what? It came and it went. It was temporary. And it's like that in life. The storms in life are temporary. They come and they go. Some are shorter in duration, some are longer in duration. But we need to know this. Every single storm didn't come to stay, it came to pass. David said, even though I walk, walk through the valley, through the storm. The dark valleys may seem like dead ends, but they're actually tunnels through which we pass on our way to peace and victory. The light will shine again in your heart and life. There's hope for you. The sun will shine. The storms of life, what? They're temporary. And here's the important principle to remember. When you and I are in the valley of the storms or the valley of darkness, keep moving. Don't allow the valley or the storm to stop you. That's the goal of the storm. The goal of every storm is to stop you, remember, and to hinder you from doing what God calls you to do. So let me edify you and encourage you this morning. Keep walking. Keep praying. Keep praising. Keep seeking. Keep reaching. Keep serving. Keep worshiping. Keep going. Keep giving. Keep sharing. Keep singing. Right? Don't stop doing what you're doing. Why? Because you're going through it. You're going through it if you don't stop. And that's really what I want to say. Don't stop in the storm. Don't stop in the storm. I'm always amazed by uh, people, and maybe you've encountered these people too. You know, you're on the highway, and uh, you're traveling, you know, let's say, to, to, to a destination using a, an interstate there, and you come across a storm, and the storm's pretty tough. I mean, the rain is beating so hard against your, your windshield, you can barely see, the, your vision's blurred, and, 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 I mean, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you, and then all of a sudden, every once in a while, there's people that are on the side, and they've stopped in the storm. And I've always kind of marveled at that. I thought, why would you stop in the storm and, and, and lock your life in the middle of the tempest? I've never understood that. Here's what we need to do. When the storm comes our way and it beats, don't stop in the storm. Don't let the storm stop you. Slow down, but don't stop. In other words, you might have been going 75. Now you might have to go 55 or 35. You might even have to go 25 miles. I'm talking on the interstate. But don't stop in the storm. Just keep moving. Just keep, just, just, you might have to slow down, but don't stop. And it's like that in life, my friends. Too many people, I mean, I can't tell you the amount of people I've counseled, and they've stopped. They've stopped everything. They've stopped coming to church. They've stopped praying. Amen? Come on now. The devil tries to get you to do this stuff when, the, when, when life hits you hard. I'm talking about real life, rubber meets the road stuff here this morning. They stopped doing everything. They stopped reading the word. They stopped worshiping God. They stopped serving God. They give up on, on God. And the, you know what? And you that's know, exactly what the devil wants them to do. That's exactly what the devil wants to do. And he'll keep them in the storm for years. And here's what the devil will do. Because he's come to steal, kill, and to destroy them, right? Here's what happens. He'll not only bring the storm of darkness into their life, he'll start bringing other storms. And I've encountered this. People that are depressed, depression is the easiest storm to get rid of. You want to know what it is? People that are depressed experience multiple storms. If you talk to people that are depressed, they can name three or four things that they're encountering. Storms. In other words, it's not just one storm, it's five storms. Well, what do you got to do? You got to start dealing with these storms and you don't stop. 
You just keep moving. You might have to slow down, but just keep moving. Keep grooving. Keep praising God in the midst of the storm. Get around some other Christians that have a testimony of them defeating the storm of depression or disease or disaster or whatever you're going through. Amen. Encourage one another in the faith. Matter of fact, Hebrews 10, 25 says that's one of the, the reasons we get together for worship. Did you remember that? It says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together all the more as you see the day approaching, encouraging one another. In other words, what we need to be doing when we get together on Sunday morning, you know what? The reality is probably half of you here today, probably 75 to 80% of you watching online today are experiencing a storm. It might be a different storm, but you're experiencing a storm today, amen? Well, when you come to church, what do you do? You get encouraged. You get reminded that, hey, greater is he that's in me than he is within the world. Amen? You get reminded you can do all things through Christ who give me strength. You get reminded that, that, uh, that God's with you, not, not against you. God's for you. Amen? We're to encourage one another in the storms of life. Right? They're temporary. Keep moving. Slow down. But don't stop. I was going through a storm of darkness one time. And I mean, the devil was hitting me hard. And uh, I mean, coming against me, trying to discourage me, trying to defeat me, trying to get me to stop. I know what I'm talking about. Trying to get me to stop. And in the middle of the night, because sometimes that's when God can talk to you. You know, when you're in the storm and you're awake, all you're, all you're thinking about is the, the thunder and the lightning. In the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit woke me up. I'll never forget looking up to see him. And the Spirit of God said this to me almost audibly. I mean, it was so loud, you know, especially when it's quiet at night. You, it's almost when God talks to you, you can almost hear it in your natural realm. And here's what, here's what the Holy Spirit said to me one time when I was in the midst of the storm of darkness. He said this, You'll, you will win if you don't quit. You'll win if you don't quit. Then he said this, don't stop until you win. And that's what the storm of darkness tries to do. It tries to get us to stop. It tries to get us to stop doing what God's called us to do. Amen. Stop doing what, what we're supposed to be doing. And here's the reality. I, boy, I tell you what, I woke up the next day. I said, devil, bless God. It can rain for the next 10 years. I'm not stopping. I'm going to slow down. I might have to slow down. I might have to walk like this. But I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep moving. Because God told me, I'd win if I don't quit. And that's a word for you today. Don't stop in the storm. Keep moving. You'll win if you don't quit. Greater is he that's with you, with you in the storm, than he that's what? Notice, in the world. In the world. Praise God for, uh, for that. 1 Peter 1, verse 6 says, There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while down here. <laughs> I like that, isn't it? It's rough sometimes down here. It is. It's called life. We need to wake up, people. That's just, it's just life. It's, it's going to be good. Dumb. Some days it's going to be bad. Some days it's going to be sunny. Some days it's going to be stormy. Some days. But if you, won't, if you won't quit, you'll win. What? There's a joy ahead. Isn't that wonderful? There's a joy ahead. God's going to give you a message out of the mess. God's going to give you a testimony out of the test. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? And God will make you a witness. You a witness of his goodness and of his grace. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says this, Our troubles are short-lived and their outcome is an eternal glory which, what? Notice, outweighs them all. You know one of the things about storms, they kind of weight you down, right? I mean, you just kind of feel deflated and defeated. I mean, that's kind of how you know you're going through it. I mean, you just feel like, man, something's coming against me. You know, you just feel heavy in heart, heavy in life. You can't even look up. You're in a storm. But notice it says this. Our troubles, what? Are forever and ever and all eternity. No. Our troubles are what? Short-lived, i.e. temporary. Our troubles are temporary. They're seasonal. They're seasonal. So just keep moving. Don't stop in the storm. Slow down. But don't stop. And that brings me to the last uh, principle and truth today. Truth number five to defeating the storm of darkness is to know 
that dark valleys are purposeful. Write that down. Dark valleys are purposeful. The amazing thing about God is this. He can take the broken pieces of our lives and craft them into his eternal purposes. I don't know how he does it. That's why he's God and I'm not. But life will hand you a lemon. Right? Life might hand you a lemon, but if you'll give that lemon to God, you know what he'll take? He'll take that lemon and he'll make it lemonade. That's what he does. If, God, if, if life hands you a lemon, if life hands you a storm, you know what we need to do? We need to say, God, here, here's a storm. Here's whatever, and name the storm. I'm giving it to you. You're greater than the storm. You take it and you work it out for your glory and for my good. 1 Peter 1, verse 6 and 7 says this, At the present you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. This is no accident. It happens what? To prove your faith. See, God's wanting to make your life a living stone, a living testament to the glory and goodness of God. Now watch this. The devil comes, John 10, 10, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy you. That's why he's coming to your life. That's why he's in this world. Amen? He's come to take us out. By bringing storms into our life. But Jesus has come, what? To give us life and that more abundantly. How does he do that? When we take what the devil brings against us, the storms, we say, Jesus, here it is. Here's this disease. Here's this depression. Here's this discouragement. Here's this, here's this mistake. Here's this, what, what, here's this lemon, Jesus. I give it to you. God takes the lemons in our lives and he makes lemonade. In other words, he turns the very thing that was meant to steal, kill, and destroy us back on the devil and gives us a testimony of victory, a testimony of, of overcoming and triumph. Jesus, uh, uh, Paul said in Romans 8, 37, in all things we are more than what? Conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Isn't that wonderful? How do we conquer in life? How do we win in life? Here's how. You give the storms to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. As long as you keep it, you're going to be defeated. Oh, I can do it. No, you can't. No, you can't. But Jesus can. Jesus can. So give Jesus your lemons and he'll make lemonade. He'll make lemonade. He'll take the good, the bad, and work it out for his glory and for your good. Romans 8, 28 through 30 talks about this principle. It hits it right on, right on the head. It says this. Look at this, and I close with this, this passage. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined, to be what? Conformed to the likeness of his son. And those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now, the point I want you to look at this is that it's a process. But notice this. He says this. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love the Lord. In other words, this is what it's saying. Whether good things come into our lives or whether bad things come into our lives, God takes the good and the bad, works it all together for our good. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, it's amazing. I don't understand how he does it. He takes the good, the bad, the bold, the beautiful, the ugly, the dirty, all of it. He takes it like a baker. He takes all the ingredients, he puts it together, and he what? He serves it up for our good, works it out together for our good, and for His glory. In other words, when we testify about victory, when we testify, you know, many of you have been healed by God. I've been healed hundreds of times. Every time I get healed, it goes back on the devil, 
as defeat, and it brings me victory, but it gives God glory. That's why we got to brag on God. When God does something good for you, when he brings you through the storm, you need to recognize that's a testimony. That's my testimony. God worked it out for my good. Amen. And for his glory. Yesterday with my aunt, the devil tried to take her out. We thought yesterday morning she's dead. Amen. I mean, we got the text message to prove it. She's dead. She's dying. I said, no, she's not. I'm mowing my grass. I'm saying, devil, I just gave the storm. Right? Amen. She's 90. I mean, it doesn't take much to take a woman out that's 90. Amen. You know? I said, God, we just give this to you. We, we, can't, we don't even know what's wrong with her. The doctor didn't even know what, what was wrong with her. And uh, all of a sudden, God healed her. God got involved in the storm. Now she's got the testimony. She's coming home today. Going home. She lives by herself at 90. Drives herself to the cafe at 90. Amen. I mean, some of us have got some elderly parents. We know what we're talking about. Amen. It's a testimony. What God gave her the victory, but he gave himself what? A testimony. Isn't that wonderful? It's good. God works all things together for the good. So here's what I'm going to do. As we wrap up this message, we need to start seeing, saints, the storms in our life from an elevated position, from heaven. Because we're seated with Christ in heaven, Colossians 1. That's really where we're at. We're already, we're, you're already bound for heaven as if you're already there. And we, 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 we are victors, we are conquerors now, not just when we get to heaven. We need to see. So when storms come into our lives, we need to say, you know what? The devil's trying to take me out with this thing. The devil's trying to discourage me. The devil's trying to throw me off here, right? That's why he's just doing his job. Give it to God, and God will what? God will turn it back on the devil. He'll, he'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll comfort you. He'll meet you at the point of your need for your good and for God's glory. Isn't that wonderful? So here's what I do. Every time I go through a storm or someone in my life goes through a storm, I don't care who it is, family or friends, I look at it and I say, hmm, what an opportunity. What an opportunity for God to get glory and for the devil to get it put back on him again and sock him one more time in the cheeks. Isn't that, isn't that just a change in, in our philosophy and in our view, change everything? It did for me. I don't deny the storm. I don't deny, you know, I'm not denying. I'm, making, I'm not making little of all this stuff. I'm just saying we don't need to go under when God's called us to go over. Amen? And we give God the lemons, and he'll take it, and he'll make lemonade in our lives. And we get to drink it and say, ha, ha, devil. <laughs> Amen, devil. Look what the Lord has done. Look what God's done in my life. The devil's a liar. We need to, my Bible says that. The devil is a liar. In other words, I like what Jesse Duplantis says. He, we need to start doubting our doubts. You know, the devil brings the devil. I doubt you're saved. I doubt that. It, it, it throws the devil into confusion. Oh, I, I doubt you're, yeah, yeah. And here's the devil. I've had the devil say this. Yeah, the de God's healed you of 27 other sicknesses, but this is number 28. You're going down. I've heard the devil tell me that. And I said, I should look at him and say, you're a liar. Here's the point I learned. The Holy Spirit taught me this. The fact that the devil told you you're going to die and he's a liar means what? You're going to live. <laughs> the truth is you're going to live. He can't tell you the truth. If the truth was you're going to die, then you're going to die. But he can't tell a lie. I mean, he can't tell the truth. If he says you're never going to get out of debt, the truth is you're going to get out of debt. If he says you're never going to be healed, the truth is you're going to be healed. If, the tr if, if he says your family, your kids, your crazy cousins are never going to get saved, what's the truth? The truth is all my family is going to be saved. Are you seeing how this thing works? It's wonderful. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. Amen? So when the storms in life come your way, don't panic. Don't get nervous. Don't sweat it. Just take a step back and say, well, wonderful. Praise God, I'm going to have another testimony. And go to Jesus. Get him involved, and he'll, he'll handle the rest. Amen? Hallelujah.
The storm of darkness didn't come to stay. It came to pass. And we just need to do what God did on day one. When he stepped out into darkness, Genesis 1, 1, 2, and, and 3, he spoke, to the, he spoke light to the darkness. He spoke light to the darkness. That's all we need to do. Just tell the darkness, get out of here. Tell the devil, get out of here. Tell sickness and disease, get out of here. Tell depression, here's the thing. If you're depressed, you're watching me online. If you're depressed today, here's what you do. You look at yourself in the mirror and tell depression to leave. In Jesus' name. And watch. It goes. It's got to go. Because the word of God is light. And I don't, I've never seen darkness ever defeat light. I haven't seen darkness defeat light in my family room or in my kitchen or in this church. We turn the lights on, guess what happens? The darkness flees. All you have to do is turn the light on in your life. What's the light? The word of God. Just speak victory to the, dark, to the darkness and you can win. You'll win if you don't quit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and thank you Lord Jesus for victory that we have been given through you over the storms of life and we speak light in Jesus name to every person that's encountering darkness today and we command the dark clouds of darkness to dissipate and disappear and leave their lives now in Jesus name amen and amen praise God